Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sofia Santos and for today's video, we will be talking about my iPad. I have been using this device for almost two months now and it has completely replaced my laptop. That means I use it for work, org, YouTube, and of course, online classes. It has been a game changer. I almost never use my laptop anymore unless I have a project that requires two screens. But the best thing about it is it doesn't have any waiting game. It opens up much faster and every app opens much quicker. I have been using it literally every day. So in this video, I'll show you guys a quick tour of the apps that I use and how I use it as a college student. But first, let's talk about accessories. Starting off with the iPad itself, this is the iPad 8th generation in space gray. It's also called as the budget iPad because it's perfect for students like me who is working on a tight budget. This one has a 10.2 retina display and 128 gigabytes. When it comes to its screen, bionic chip, its compatibility with the Apple Pencil 2 and other keyboards, it is quite different compared to iPad Air and iPad Pro. But with its price, it already does everything I needed to do and it does it well. So. When it comes to the Apple Pencil, I wasn't really disappointed that it was only compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil because I had no plan on buying that super expensive freaking pencil. <laughs> Instead, I got one from the brand called Gujadog. This is a touchscreen pencil compatible with a lot of devices. It doesn't really have Bluetooth anymore. All you have to do is click that and when the light is open, you can use it already. The only difference is it has a different charger and it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. And of course, to protect my iPad, I have the iPad case. This is the typical one that you see everywhere. It's a magnetic iPad that opens... iPad. It's a magnetic case that opens your iPad automatically and you can also fold it like so. Ta-da! <laughs> if you want to use it as a stand and like this if you want to use it for writing. This particular one also has a place for my pencil which comes in really handy. And of course, I have a keyboard. If you're using your iPad as a laptop alternative, having a Bluetooth keyboard comes in really handy. This one is just from the brand called Ajaz and it just has a minimal design with circular keys. So those are all the accessories that I use every day. So now let's move on to how I use them. So this is the first thing you see when you open up my iPad. Um, I made my wallpaper from Procreate, but of course, it's inspired by Pinterest. I also have a bunch of folders on top over here. And when you swipe left, I have a bunch of widgets. The first step to my productive workflow is always planning, hence the widgets that I have here on the side. The first one is for my Apple Calendar. This is what I use to keep track of events and deadlines. I have a calendar specific for each aspect of my life. So I have personal, school, YouTube, and for my org. I also indicated here my everyday class schedule and the highlighted parts are for my deadlines. So when I'm adding an event, I usually just add the title and if it's a deadline, I turn on all day so that it becomes highlighted. I can also indicate what time it ends and what time it starts and then I'll indicate what calendar it belongs to and it also has a feature that allows you to get notified when something's coming up which is really good. The next widget that I have is from an app called TikTok. This is my favorite to-do list app because it has a lot of features. When you open it up, it opens opens my today view that arranges all of my tasks according to how I prioritize them. It also has a inbox for the tasks that I have scheduled for another day. Then I have my calendar view and it also has a timer. What's really interesting is aside from a Pomodoro timer, it also has a stopwatch wherein you can pick whatever task you want to time and later on look at the statistics about it. So it's really interesting. It shows how long you worked on a specific task, how long you focused for the day and stuff like that. 
Aside from planning, I also like bullet journaling, but I do prefer to do that on a physical notebook. So what I focus on my digital journal is my monthly calendar. I keep track of what I do for the day with a bunch of pictures and stickers and I find it really fun to look at and it's so much easier to journal like this on an iPad. So what I do for this is I just quickly search Google Photos and put it on split screen so that I have a view of the photos that I have every month. After downloading whatever photo I want to insert on my journal, I just quickly add that to GoodNotes and either crop it into a square or freehand crop it with the GoodNotes itself. Oh, and of course I have to put the dates on. I only do this when I have free time to relax but I find it really fun. Phase 2 is time for lectures. For this, I mostly just use Zoom, either on my phone or on split screen on my iPad. On the side, I usually just have GoodNotes 5, either showing my professor's presentation so that I can annotate it as he teaches us. Or for most days, when I have my Zoom call on my phone, I put my iPad like this for note taking. Digital note taking has really changed how I study and I can make a whole video about it but for a brief overview, the colors that I use for my pens are super dark gray, blue, and red. With a thicker pen, I write my title in black and with a smaller pen in blue, I write my titles or my headers. For definitions, I also write them in black but when I have to highlight a specific part, I usually just change the color into red. I tried to keep it really simple because I feel like the handwriting on my iPad is a little bit harder to read because I'm just getting used to it. GoodNotes 5 comes with a lot of helpful features including this selection tool that allows you to move and resize objects really easily and you can also insert photos rather quickly and then annotate them with your pens. And when it comes with reviewing, I'm really used to highlighting my notes, so I can also do that on here. My favorite thing about it is its eraser has an auto deselect function. So the moment you lift up your pen when erasing something, it automatically transfers to your pen options. So you can go back to writing in an instant. To highlight some of my notes even more, I usually put them in boxes like these, which GoodNotes 5 allows you to do easily because it has a, a shape option that whenever you're drawing a certain shape, no matter how imperfect it is, it makes it perfect. And pretty much that's it. Phase 3 is for projects and researches. My favorite search engine for this will always be Microsoft Edge. It has a feature called collections wherein you can keep track and organize your tabs. So you have all the websites that you need for your research here and what's really interesting about it is you can also add different notes on. So this is really helpful for keeping track of information that you need for that specific website. The fact that this stays on the side while you do research also makes it really helpful for comparing information and websites. Of course, when I do my research, I also have to write my paper as well. So this is where the split screen feature of the iPad comes in really handy so that I can write and research simultaneously. Another really cool feature of the iPad is its slide over app. So for example, if I have to talk to anyone on Messenger, I can quickly just slide it over and I have a small window of fit on the side. When you use the tab to swipe up, you can see all of the apps that you have on slide over. So if I have to use Notion, I can just quickly do that. I can swipe this everywhere on my screen and even swipe it out and swipe it back in. <laughs> and finally, for phase four, let's talk about creative projects. Of course, my favorite will always be Canva. It's just so easy to use and comes with a lot of templates. Then I also have Pinterest for all of my inspiration and ideas. If it's infographics, hair, outfit, and all of the above, it's all in here and I just love it so much. 
And another one of my favorites is Procreate. It's a paid app, but it's so freaking worth it. It has a bunch of brushes and features that are similar to Photoshop, but I think it's much easier and simpler to use. Next app that I have is called Pockets. Now this one is similar to Pinterest that makes you make boards of different links, but it allows you to do that across different apps. So for example, I find a really inspirational Facebook post. All I have to do is click share, more options, and save it to Pocket. Then you'll see them listed out on Pockets itself. I have a lot of creative apps, but the last one that I want to show you is called Pastels. Now, this one is perfect when you like to work with color palettes. I love it so much because you can make one yourself, add your own name, and create a color palette from a photo that you take from the app or from a previous photo that you have on your phone. And that's it. I have been talking for way too long now, so we're gonna end this video right here. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, especially if you reach until the end. Make sure to click thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I make beauty and lifestyle related videos, so if you're interested in that, don't miss out. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. One, two, three, fuck it.